Well, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. Are you all hot? Yeah? Yeah? I'm wearing a suit, so there we go. I'm hotter. Um, it's nice to see you all. Um, my name's Mark, the Families and Youth Minister. If you're new to us today, a uh, very special welcome. And um, everything should appear on the screen. You should have Bibles near you as well for when it's sermon time. And just a few notices for uh, regular members. We've got loads going on this week. It's an absolutely packed week. We've got fuel as usual. They're in here for a family barbecue. Um, we've, got a, we've got two ladies' book groups meeting on the Tuesday and the Wednesday. We've got tea, toast, and toys on Wednesday. We've got a church family prayer meeting. And um, uh, please do come, even if you don't like pl- praying out loud. That's completely fine. It'd be great for you to uh, come along and join us. Um, And obviously, highlights looking forward, we've got the Ladies' Summer Social on Tuesday the 19th, we've got the Men's Group on Saturday the 23rd, and we've got Rock Cafe, everyone. Yay, yeah? We've got Rock Cafe during the summer, every Tuesday morning during the summer. Um, Well, five, five Tuesday mornings during the summer, and that is for families. Um, please take the uh, card at the back, um, which tells you exactly what's going on. And if you know of any families that might be interested, um, then do pass those on. So, um, I thought it's been a while since we had any good news. So, we've got any good news? And you had good news this week, Caroline, didn't you? Yes. Sorry, I'm picking on you here. It was my birthday. So only 46, yeah? 46. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Tell us what you did on your birthday. I went, I went to the Fitzwilliam Museum and saw the Hockney exhibition. It was fantastic. I recommend it. Very nice. Thank you, Caroline. That's good news. Any other good news? Isaac? Um, yeah. 5S or 5P. Is that good? Yeah. That is good news, yeah? Nice one. Excellent. Any other good news from this side? No? Wimbledon's on, everyone, final. That's good news, isn't it? That's the excuse. You can get your strawberries and your pims out. Watch the final. That's what I think we're doing that. Are we doing that? We're, yeah, there we are. Yeah, I'm getting a nod. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, Isaac, more good news? lost my tooth in the car. You lost your tooth in the car? Oh, amazing. Did, did you actually find it in the end? Yes, my cousin, because she... Mum's looking after tooth. That's very good. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's reasonable fun losing teeth as children, isn't it? Most of the time. But it's less fun when you lose a tooth as an adult. Yeah. Bad memories there. Okay. Well, it's great to be together. And we're going to start off um, by saying... Um, we're going to do it kind of um, antiphonally, I think the word is. We're going to say uh, the first few verses of Psalm 95. So I'm going to say the bit in italics, and then if you would like to respond in bold. Okay, so nice and loud, everyone. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. For the Lord is the great God. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us bow down in worship. For he is our God. Amen. Well, let's start and uh, sing praise to God uh, with our first song from The Breaking of the Dawn. Let's stand.
please sit down. And we're going to uh, spend some time now in quiet um, as we uh, get to our part of the service where we confess our sins to God. We're going to say sorry to God now for the things that we've said, thought, and done that are aware to us now and for the things that aren't aware to us. Um, so let's just uh, have a moment of quiet and um, then we will join into, uh, in the words that are on the screen. But um, some words from Psalm 130 um, as, we, as we sit in quietness. Psalmist writes, Hear my cry, O Lord. Listen to my call for help. If you kept a record of our sins, who could escape being condemned? But you forgive us so that we should stand in awe of you. I wait eagerly for the Lord's help, and in his word I trust. So together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that has passed and grant that we serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Right, well, um, I've got a game, everyone. I've got a game. I was wondering where the best place for the, to do this game was, because it's a bit bouncy, you see? So the balls are going to bounce all over the place, but we're just going to have to deal with it. We're just going to have to deal with it. So. Uh, what I need is I need, uh, we need two teams, okay? Two teams. church, does it? But anyway, let's, uh, let's have this half, these, this, this, this section and this section as Team Aquafresh, okay? Because we're talking about teeth earlier. So let's, they're your Team Aquafresh, right? And then the, the, the choir and the other musicians and this chunk here, your Team, guess it? Colgate, yeah. There we go. Right, Team Aquafresh and Team Colgate. Now, I need one representative from each team to take part in the game. Now, let me just demonstrate what we've got to do, okay? So you come forward, you stand on the step, you bounce the ball, you get three goes, by the way. Actually, we'll, we'll probably end up having to just have as many goes as it takes you to get one in the cup, okay? but you bounce your ball on the floor. It's got to hit the floor first in front of the board, and then you've got to get in the cup, okay? It is harder than it looks. See? And then it goes over, and then we can't find the balls. So that's the game, everyone. Are you excited? Now, what you need to do is, Isaac, you're, you're here for Team Aquafresh, yeah? So Isaac is uh, representing Team Aquafresh, now, Team Aquafresh, your job is not to throw the balls. You've got to cheer Isaac on. Okay, you've got to really encourage him. You've got to, like, go, Isaac, Isaac, yeah? Should we have a practice, yeah? Isaac, Isaac, Isaac. I Come on, Aquafresh, you can do it, right? Okay, um, don't start yet, Isaac, because we need another 
obviously we need another representative. Right, so now what's your name again? Adriana. Adriana, of course it is. Now, Adriana, you are representing Team Colgate, so do you want to come out the front? Now, Team Colgate, are you ready to shout and cheer for Adriana? Let's have a practice. Adriana, Adriana, Adriana. Okay, now, let's start with Team uh, Aquafresh. Isaac is going to go. Now, let me just see if I've got all the... Here we go. Hold your hands out. You just, yeah, hold your hands out like... Okay, I'll just keep this one. I'll keep these. Right, you ready? This is official now, okay? So, what we're going to do is we'll, do, we'll start off with three. You do three, and then Adriana does three. And whoever gets the most balls in wins, yeah? Okay, ready? Okay. Two. Oh, close. Three. Okay, that's a little warm up round. So you'd, you'd add three goes there, okay? So, Adriana, you want three goes? That was very close, Isaac. Well done. Your team didn't really cheer that loud, okay? Some of them did, but some of them weren't. They weren't saying anything at all. So, you can have words with them after about that. Okay, Adriana, you have three goes and see if you can get in, okay? So bounce it on the floor. That's it. That's it. Oh, that's a supportive team, yeah. That's it. Bounce it there. Oh, that was close. And one more. Okay. One more. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, that didn't count, okay, Adriana, okay? Because we need to play fair, don't we? Now, let's take it in turns. So, Isaac, do you want to come up again? And it was kind of a death, sort of a, a dead heat kind of, you know, first person to get in. Okay, Adriana? Here we go. Right, you stand up. Uh, the two of you can just stand up here at the same time, okay? And just, just go for it, okay? And then your teams can cheer you on. Okay, bounce. Keep going. That's it, keep going. We've got to get one ball in. <laughs> Have another go, Adriana. Oh, nearly. Okay, well, thank you very much, Adriana and Isaac. Okay, actually, no, don't take the balls. Um, I'll leave those here. Okay, do you want to go and sit down? Thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. That was good. Okay. Uh, that was brilliant. Okay, so that is one of the featured games in Rock Cafe this summer. So it's Bouncy Bouncy, it's called. Yeah, Bouncy Bouncy. If you want to play more Bouncy Bouncy in a more relaxed manner, then come to Rock Cafe. Um, so well done, both teams, because you were cheering your representative on, weren't you? And when we come to church, we're a bit like cheering on our favorite team, aren't we? So this afternoon, you might be cheering for someone to win the tennis or whatever your favorite sport is. You know, you cheer for the winning team. You cheer for your team, yeah? And when we come to church, we are team Jesus, aren't we? And we are cheering for Jesus. We praise his name. We praise him in, with music and song. We praise him as we listen to his word. We praise him as we pray to him. We praise him as we love one another. So that's just a, an interesting way to think about cheering on. When you come to church on Sunday, are we thinking, are we here to cheer on Team Jesus? Yeah? It's a cool way to think about it. Um, the uh, young people are going to go out during the next two songs. So I'm going to say a prayer for them for Junior Church. Um, so let's, uh, let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you that we can meet together as your family and we praise you, Father, for um, all the blessings that we have as we meet together. 
And we pray that as Team Jesus here in Terrington, we would be cheering him on as we uh, praise and worship you, as we hear from your word, as we love one another. Thank you, Father, that we can be together in this way. And Father, we pray for junior church as they go. Uh, please help the leaders to, um, to run that session. And may everyone there be drawn closer to you, just as we are who are staying in the building. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing two songs now um, together. So, may the mind of Christ my Savior, followed by speak, O Lord, as we come to you. Then we're going to have our readings, and then Martin's going to preach for us. So, first up, may the mind of Christ my Savior. Let's stand.
please sit down. And uh, now Emma and uh, Mike are going to bring us our Bible readings. Thanks very much. The first reading can be found on page 689 in the Pew Bibles, and it comes from Isaiah chapter 5, uh, reading verses 1 to 7. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed. For righteousness, but heard cries of distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next reading can be found on page 1035. It's from Luke's Gospel, chapter, uh, chapter 6, and verses 43 to 49. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that the moment the torrent struck that house It collapsed, and its destruction was complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Emma and Mike, for reading. And it would be a great help to me if you could keep Luke chapter 6 open in front of you as we go through it together. And I've also got some slides to help us. Um, But before I begin, let's pray for God's help. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. and We thank you for this chance to come together this morning and worship you. Thank you, Lord, that you promised that you were among us by your Spirit. And we pray so much that you would speak to us this morning through this passage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you can see, uh, this morning I'm going to start us off with the simple question, what does living as a Christian look like? Is it just carrying out a bunch of tasks every week? Go to church, tick, 
Well, all doing brilliant so far. Read your Bible, pray, give away some of your money, make sure you're following the Ten Commandments, listen attentively to the sermon. Or does it look like, actually, any of these people? We often see Christians in the news or as minor celebrities or as a character in a TV show or film. Or when thinking about this, particular stereotypes might also come to mind. Street preachers in Kings Lynn, worship leaders in bigger churches or on the internet, someone always talking about Jesus all the time, or simply somebody devout and kneeling at their bedside. Or actually so often the person in the room that is really weird and awkward. Well, being task-focused or looking at the most famous Christians around us or focusing on certain aspects here could lead us down wrong paths very quickly. And when thinking about this, I tend to find focusing on amazing Christian lives from the past can be helpful. So we have a kid's book at home, Everyone a Child Should Know, and this is 52 Christian men and women from all walks of life who wanted to live for Jesus. These are missionaries and martyrs, writers, reformers, politicians, preachers, poets, sporty people, arty people, brilliant people, really ordinary people, people of all shapes, sizes, colours from different countries and backgrounds. And these lives, as you read about them, and I'd, I'd say go away and do that, are definitely inspiring and I'd always recommend that. But even with this variety, it's often hard to think, what then should my Christian life look like? Here today in North Norfolk, or wherever you are this morning, with your personality, your life experience, what should following Jesus look like for you? Well, our passage in Luke today is going to help us with this question enormously. The best possible person is going to be speaking to us each personally. So this week, Jesus is going to tell us what our lives should look like. And then next week, if you're here, he's then going to show us with the example of the Roman centurion. But before we get to that, let's firstly remind ourselves where we are. We're in Luke's Gospel. We've got Luke writing his account of Jesus' life and he's doing it for his friend Theophilus and anyone else reading, and he wants us to be certain about the things that we've been taught. And it's all about Jesus who came to seek and save the lost. And over the last few weeks, we've been focusing on Jesus' first set of teaching, the Sermon on the Plain. So if you look back at verse 17, it says, he went down with them, and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him, and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him, and healing them all. And we've heard Jesus not hold back over the last few weeks in this sermon. We've had blessings and woes pronounced. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. We've had commands that are really surprising, countercultural. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. And then further striking commands we've seen, Things like, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. But this week, we're going to see how he finishes this sermon. And he's going to finish it with an encouragement and a challenge. And he does this through talking about two pictures that we all know really well. A tree in verses 43 to 45 and a house in verses 46 to 49. So let's get to it and see firstly what Jesus says being a tree is all about. 
Look down again at verses 43 and 44. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. Well, trees are brilliant, aren't they? There's an estimated 73,000 tree species across the globe, among which 9,000 are yet to be discovered. Therefore, it's something we're all familiar with and perfect for Jesus to use here. And like most things in life, there are good trees and bad trees. But how do we tell them apart? Unfortunately, as Jesus explains here, it's, it's really simple, even for terrible gardeners like me who don't have a clue on these things. If there is bad fruit on your tree, it is a bad tree. If there is good fruit on your tree, it is a good tree. Because a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. It really doesn't, it's not rocket science, it really doesn't need a diagram, but um, if there's one here anyway, so you see, good tree, it's not gonna have bad fruit, bad tree's not gonna have good fruit. It's the other way around. Um, Jesus then takes this picture further and tells us how each tree is recognized by its own fruit. So if there are figs on your tree, then it's a fig tree. If there are grapes, then it's a, a grape tree or a, or a vine. And you can't find these particular fruits anywhere else. If you start looking for them elsewhere, like in a thorn bush or a briar, unsurprisingly, you're not going to find them. You may find other fruits, like blackberries, for example, but there's not going to be any grapes or figs. So hopefully all quite straightforward so far, but how, how does that relate to us? And Jesus explains this in verse 45. People are spiritual trees producing spiritual fruit. And like trees, we are in the same two categories, good and bad. So how do we tell them apart? Unlike trees at a garden center, unfortunately, we don't have a useful label attached to us. It'd be great, wouldn't it, if we had all labels like Martin or Martinus Stevenus, a brown elm, tall, six foot one, 37 years, decent condition, God says, bad person. But Jesus says here, actually, we don't need a label because our fruits show whether we are good or bad. And what are those fruits? Well, it's our character and our conduct. So if we're producing good fruits, if we are patient, joyful, if we're doing good things, speaking well of others, serving, giving, then we are good on the inside. We have good stored up in our hearts. And if we're producing bad fruits, if we're impatient, we're angry, if we're doing bad things, speaking badly about others, looking after only ourselves, taking, then we are bad on the inside. We have evil stored up in our hearts. But wait a minute, I hear you cry. Life's not that simple, is it, Martin? We can't split into good people and evil people. We all do good and bad things, don't we, throughout our lives? Surely it shouldn't be a tree. Surely it should be a, a pair of scales. That'd be better here, wouldn't it, than trees? Then if we get more on the good side than the bad side, we're good. Or if we get more in the bad side than the good side, we're evil. Well, that might be fine for our way of looking at life. But the Bible tells us that God's standards of good and evil are clear and absolute. It's either that we are all good or bad. A completely good tree where we find great character, conduct, or a bad tree. 
And unfortunately, it's quite clear that we are bad trees. The Bible says to us, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. And then it gets worse because as we saw in our Isaiah passage, our first passage, what happens to bad trees? They're cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, you may have heard me say earlier that picture one was meant to be an encouragement, and it definitely wouldn't be an encouragement if God left things there. But we know for the Christian, Jesus didn't leave us in that state. If we trust in Jesus, we know that he takes our evil character, our evil deeds on himself. He takes the punishment from God that we deserve and dies on a tree. And then in rising to life again, he doesn't just open the way to heaven for us. He gives us a brand new heart, his perfect heart. So then that we are those good people, bringing good things out of the good stored up in our hearts. So if you call yourself a Christian this morning, be encouraged. You are a good tree bearing the best fruit. God has given you his heart, which will overflow with the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that is what every different Christian life will be full of. So keeping hold of that firmly in our minds, we then approach the second half of our passage, where Jesus quickly provides an unexpected twist in one line. Look again at verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Wait a minute, why are you calling yourself a Christian? calling yourself the good tree, but you're not doing as I ask you to do. You are not producing the fruits I ask you to. And this is where picture two from Jesus is going to provide us with that challenge. As Robert showed us at the start of this series, we need both encouragements and challenges. We can then be confident that we're then living authentic Christian lives. And picture two is all about building a house. Look again at verses 47 to 49. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So here we have another relatively simple picture, a house being built on two different foundations And then what happens if a flood then strikes each house? If a house is built on a foundation of rock, it is rock solid. Even a powerful flood can't then shake it. But if a house is built on top of the sandy ground without a foundation, it is going to be in trouble. Once that flood comes along and hits it, it is then destroyed. So again, we've got a good house on the one hand and a bad house, one that stands strong 
and one that collapses. And Jesus says, if we're to stand strong, we need to be laying our foundations on him. We are to have lives where we're listening to his words and then putting them into practice. If we have lives where we fail to listen to his words or listen and don't do anything about it, we'll be building our lives without a foundation in him. We will just be building on top of the sand and we'll then face tragedy, complete destruction. And these two results are stark again and couldn't be clearer. But yet we still struggle to live our lives following Jesus' teaching. For example, Jesus says to us, don't be greedy. And we still show our greed time and time again in many areas, whether it's food, money, shopping, entertainment. Or again, Jesus says, be careful with your words. And then instead of doing that, we use them for our own gain or we lie, or we slander. And those are only a couple of examples. So how can we change that? How can we do what he says? And clearly, it's not easy. So I have four suggestions for us to go away with this morning, uh, to go away with this morning. And the first suggestion is, Get serious about listening. So, simpler one to start. If we don't actually listen to Jesus um, and hear his words, then we definitely can't do what he says. That is why we focus here on preaching the Bible week in, week out. That is why we're keen that everybody is reading the Bible for themselves. But apart from those things, the great thing is that Jesus' words also appear in songs, videos, podcasts, plays, conferences, training, other books, fiction and non-fiction, website articles, and in the words of others. So there are so many great ways to hear Jesus. And we say if you're struggling to find those resources, we can always point you in the right direction. There is so much out there. So, number one, get serious about listening. Number two, get thinking about how to act. Sometimes it's obvious and clear how we need to act once we hear something. A lot of the New Testament letters give us really clear directions. But sometimes it will take thinking and praying once we've heard something because it won't be obvious what we need to do. But the key thing is not to push it away, not to push it aside. Ask the Lord, tell me what you want me to do now that I've heard this. Or maybe you know straight away, or it comes to you after a while, but you think this is just too hard to carry out, or hard to even start. So in that situation... Ask the Lord, show me how to do this. Lord, teach me how to do this. So number two, get thinking about how to act. And the next leads on from this. Number three, get started on changing. And Jesus doesn't expect that we're going to change overnight in lots of different areas. All he wants is for you to start. Um, A great book on this um, is You Can Change by uh, Tim Chester. Um, There's lots of aspects in this this sermon that he sort of talks about. And in the last chapter, he talks about two things, about how change is a lifetime task and how change is a daily task. So I've got two quick excerpts on both those things. So a lifetime task. Change isn't a one-off event. It takes a lifetime. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Christians are called to a lifetime of change. The habits and thought processes of sin are not easily unlearned. There are a few quick fixes. We'll never be perfect in this life, 
but we can always and should always be changing. And then on change being a daily task, he says, the battle for holiness is made up of daily littles. It's not given to many of us to make life and death choices for our saviour. Not many will be called on to recant or to be martyrs. No, for us, the battle is made up of thousands of little moments each day. Choices between self and service. So you can hear the sort of key, key thing there. Um, it's all about just getting started on changing and sort of thinking, this is going to be my life. And, and then sort of thinking through that it's each day, um, little by little. But finally, point number four, remember picture one, you are that good tree. It's so easy when we think about change to beat ourselves up, that when we fail for the thousandth time, or we forget, or we're in pain because of what we do, or we're struggling with trying to change. Don't be too hard on yourself. In those moments, remember what Jesus has done for you. And remember here what he says in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. So as I close, let's return to the question at the beginning. What should my Christian life look like? And this morning we've seen that whoever you are, whatever your particular personality, whatever your life experience, that it should be like a tree and a house. Your life should be like a tree bearing the best fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Because if you trust in him, Jesus has given you his good heart. And the good person brings good things out of the good stored up in their heart. And also, your life should look like a house. A house built deep on the best foundation of rock. And how do we do that? By hearing Jesus' challenge. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Let us respond to that. Go to him. Hear his words and put them into practice. Because if we do that, he says to us, you will be well built, you will be strong, and you will withstand any floods that come your way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your words this morning. Thank you that you promise to us that if we trust in your Son, we will be like that good tree, bearing those amazing fruits of the Spirit. Help us to be encouraged by that. Help us to remember that. but also help us to respond to your challenge, Lord. 
Help us to be people that are building our lives on your words. Help us to listen to your words. Help us to think about your words and about how we should act. Help us to get ready for a lifetime of change, one where we're looking to change each and every day. And to remember, Lord, that, um, that you are going to help us with that, that you give us your spirit to help us change. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks very much, Martin. Should we just have uh, a couple of moments uh, remaining quiet as we uh, keep thinking about those words uh, before we sing? Let's uh, stand and sing, O great God of highest heaven. Yeah. 
please sit down. And now Emma's going to come and lead us in prayer. Thanks, Emma. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with our prayers, praises and thanks to pray for the church, the wider community and for the needs of the world. We thank you for our teachers as they prepare to finish another school year. Thank you that they have been back teaching in person for quite a few months now. Help them to finish the school year well and may they have good rest over the holidays. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, that a new leader will be chosen soon, that they will be honest and upstanding and want what's best for the country, that they will do the work of Prime Minister diligently and without thought of their own personal gain. We pray for Rock Cafe promotion happening in the school fair, that lots of people will be reached and will be interested in coming to the Rock Cafe. And we pray for Rock Cafe itself. Lots of people will turn up, that lots of fun will be had, but also the gospel will be shared and hearts will be moved. We pray for Celebrate happening in the walks in a couple of weeks' time. Pray for unity among the churches as they come to celebrate your love by providing a fun day for all the people of King's Lynn. We pray that the people will be blessed and again hearts moved as your love is shared among the people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church family. Pray that God will give us a spirit of unity as we continue to follow him. Thank you for all the church groups where we can get to know each other and also get to know you more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the Bethesda Mission Orphanage, that Pastor Sam and his staff will continue to look after the children and continue to maintain their high standards of administration and care. Thank you that the children have a loving family where they can grow up in a safe environment. And thank you that your love is shared with them every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks, Emma. Um, let's stand and uh, sing our final song. We shall stand with our feet on the rock. How cool is that? Let's stand.
Please sit down. Well, big thanks to everyone involved in the service. And uh, thanks to those people that are preparing refreshments now. Do stay for refreshments um, and, uh, you know, stay in chat. Uh, but uh, let's have a final prayer before we do that. Father in heaven, thank you that we have the opportunity to be good trees through what the Lord Jesus has done. Thank you that we can look forward to being perfected when he returns. So please help us, uh, Father, to uh, build our lives on him, on the rock. Help us to uh, point our lives to you, to change bit by bit for your glory. To him who, by means of his power working in us, is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or even think of, to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and ever. Amen.